I know you're listening. You're here because something isn't right. Something feels twisted, upside down. Things don't add up. Hello, human. Welcome to our Twisted Universe. In this episode, we speak with multidimensional teacher and healer for the New Atlantis Rising, Amira Atlantis. Hi, and welcome to our Twisted Universe. Today, we're going to be talking to Amira Atlantis. She is a multidimensional teacher, a healer for the New Atlantis Rising. She's our resident mermaid and we're so happy to have you today amira thank you for joining us thank you christy and joe for for having me here um it's very exciting to speak and i'm I'm happy to be with you both christy you and i have known each other for i don't know 10 years from back in the vancouver days right it's so good to reconnect you had a profound change in my life i you were one of the first healers and teachers that i went to and I took classes with you and I had such a, an amazing experience, um, learning about the chakras, a life-changing experience. Um, you're an incredible teacher, by the way. <laughs> and, um, during those classes, you told us about your awakening experience and I found it to be really unique and incredible. Um, it was kind of mind blowing at the time. I, I have a deeper understanding of it now, all these years later. But um, I wanted to bring you on today um, to talk a little bit about that and your healing courses and energy work. Um, do you think you could tell us a little bit about waking up and how that started for you? Yep. And I'll just start by saying that for anybody out there who's listening to this, if, you're, if you've got, recently gone through an awakening or if you're looking back at your spiritual awakening, like, it, you know, it's not always like the fun, magical world that you know, we think it is. Um, I remember in the early days of having my awakening and and I, I was kind of late in life, like I was 37 or 38 when, when I had my awakening. Um, and I just thought I was going to be like a wife and a mother in Phoenix, Arizona. I just thought that was going to be, you know, my lot in life and that was going to be fine. And when I had, you know, my final moment of being hit with the two by four and being smacked awake, like it wasn't, pretty and it wasn't fun it was actually kind of um <laughs> devastating in a ways because um when we go through our awakening process and, and for me I was um I was sitting in Phoenix Arizona and I had a, about a one-year-old baby driving a minivan you know living in the suburbs and I was watching this show on Oprah about women around the world who who were 30 and uh, listening to and watching what their, their life was like uh, for them wherever they lived. And with some of the women, you know, I had a little bit in common with, but most of them, you know, I, I, I had absolutely nothing in, in common with them. And I was listening to their, their stories. Um, and, and many of them had lived, lived through some really deep atrocities uh, in, in life, like things that I had never experienced in my, you know, suburban <laughs> housewife life. But I found that each woman who, who spoke, no matter how similar or different our lives were, I felt myself drawn and connected to them in a way I could not describe. And I actually sat and sobbed through, through the entire episode, because as I looked at every single one of those women, I, I felt she was me. Like, I felt that was me talking to me. I saw myself in their, in their eyes. And I had never had that kind of an experience with anyone before, not my family, not my girlfriends, nobody. And it was so uh, just, you know, it was so strange to be uh, so incredibly emotionally connected and like just tears flowing and my heart, you know, what was happening is my heart chakra <laughs> was opening. And back then I didn't even know what a heart, I didn't even know what a chakra was. <laughs> All I know is for days I couldn't get those women out of my mind and, and I went to the person that I was married to and days later, and I was like, 
I don't know what's happening to me. I saw these women on Oprah and I can't stop thinking about them. I just love them. And he's like, I don't know what's wrong with you either. And so that moment was, that was the catalyst of spirit finally kind of breaking through through, through that show on Oprah and opening my heart chakra and reminding me of all the things that I was meant to do in this life that I had forgotten in my, you know, Catholic raised traditional, very in the box kind of life. So that was like the, the, the setting off point, you know, and now looking back and you probably can relate to this too, Christy and Joe, like once you have that moment of being shocked awake, (laughs) you look back and you go, okay, spirit was trying to do this and show me this way and do this and show me this way. And I didn't pay attention and I didn't, didn't see and too much time went on. So bang, got the two by four, right? Here I am. <laughs> that actually just happened to one of my friends. Yeah. She put a um an evil eye up in her bedroom. Um, you know, they're for protection. Yeah. I think what happened was it like cleared the pathway because all of a sudden she started getting messages and downloads. I think it sucked all, everything out of the room or out of her space that was preventing her. From from seeing through the veil or, or or moving through that you know it through through that energy. Yeah, she was. It was quite um, shocking, and it's like I hear these stories so often, and it 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 just is that one thing, and then forevermore, yeah. <laughs> you, For, you forevermore you're different. And yeah. once there's you know waking up, there's there's no going back to sleep. Um, I ended up ultimately going a few weeks later to a woman who had been uh, my psychic and and mentor for many years uh, in Phoenix and sitting down in front of her because I I was becoming so different. I was hearing my voice call, my name called in the middle of the night. I started reading, um, you know, books by Wayne Dyer and having all these existential experiences and not feeling like I was in my body anymore. I kind know. of feeling like I was going crazy <laughs> and, and I didn't know what was happening. So, you know, I went to her um, uh, several weeks after that and I sat down in front of her and, and I began to cry. And I said, Amy, I don't know what's going on with me. I, I feel like I'm going crazy. I saw this show on Oprah. I'm reading this book. Like I'm, I'm just not myself anymore. I don't know what's going on. And she looked at me, she says, oh, you woke up. Congratulations. I've been waiting years for this. And I looked at her and I said, put me back to sleep. I don't like this. She says, no, once you, once the awakening starts, there's no going back. And you're here to be more than a mother and a, you know, a housewife. And you're going to be teaching these classes and leading these drum circles and doing this. And I just sat there dumbfounded. (laughs) I'm like, are you sure? Right. Oh, and you're going to move back to Portland. And she kind of laid out the next, next wow. years of my life, you know, about the different experiences and things I would, I, I, I would be, I would be going through moving mm-hmm. into this, this purpose of this calling. And, and she told me that I was really here to be a, a, a teacher and, and a leader for, for women mo- mostly. So I left there feeling very stunned and amazed, but also like, I had purpose like that moment. They say there's two great moments in your life, the day you're born and the day you find out why. (laughs) And, you know, and I, I was like, Oh my God, I actually have a a purpose on this planet. And that felt what she said felt so weird, but also felt so right to my soul that I immediately just dove headfirst into every book that I could read. I started meditating. I started like learning and catching up, I guess, um, on everything that I'd forgotten for 38 years. My husband didn't know what was happening to me. He was like, I can't really relate to you anymore. What, what, what he he wasn't having his awakening. I was only having mine. And that dynamic was very difficult. So for anybody out there who is in a relationship, or even if you're not in a relationship, but you're surrounded by people who don't understand because they're not having that personally, that is normal. <laughs> that that's of often people, time they fall away. And yeah, part of the journey, and it's very lonely. Yes, <laughs> it can be a very lonely and isolating. I did not have anybody in my sphere. No friends. No family know partnerships who really understand what was what was happening within me 
And I, uh, I really had to overcome that sense of not fitting in anymore in, in, in any respect and find and figure out who my tribe was, like who my people were and who might understand me because I was so quickly becoming so different because I knew I had to stay true to this path and this calling and follow and figure out what spirit really wanted me to do. That is, that's incredible. I, when I woke up, <laughs> we had a conversation. I was like, you, I, we have to stay level here yeah. somewhat. And I was like, I, I don't know what to do with all that. I, I kind of had a similar kind of feeling like I have to go. We have to, yeah. I have to do this. Yeah. And yeah. She, she's like, I'm going, are you going with me or are you staying behind? And I'm like, well, and I was thinking in my mind, I'm like, well, you've caught up with me <laughs> to a degree and now we can carry <laughs> forward. <laughs> I love it. I love it. So, so yeah. you, you're very blessed that you have a partnership where you could continue the journey together and one person grows and the other one grows, you know, and then the other person grows and the other one comes along and, and it becomes a symbiotic process um, for me, you know, uh, the person I was married to ultimately was was not meant to to continue the journey with me. We had a family together, and it it, it was very difficult. The, the you know the delusion disillusion of of our of our marriage and our partnership. Um, that was the very brave process that that I had to move through because he just didn't want to. His soul wasn't here to do it. Yeah, it wasn't that I was any better or whatever, but his soul just was not here to continue that process and journey. And he needed to go on the path where he was most aligned and in a partnership where, where there was good, a good alignment, you know, as did I. Um, and so as I continued on, you know, to do my studies and meditate and learn, I uh, came across past life regression therapy and started reading books by Dolores Cannon and, and Dr. Brian Weiss. And at the same, same time was having these experiences in my body during meditation where, you know, my arms would move by themselves, independent of my will, my whole body would move. Um, and these graceful kind of swimmy movements. And I didn't, know what was happening within me like I didn't about all I knew is if I went to other people and did these spiraling movements I could help take away headaches I could soothe my children like there was obviously some kind of energy transmission happening so I went to a past life regression therapist um and 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 let her give me a regression and um I found myself on on her couch in the trance in the hypnosis and immediately, I somatically, physically went into the water and started doing this up and down on her couch, exclaiming, I'm a mermaid, I'm a mermaid. And and in my mind, I'm thinking, this woman's going to think I'm crazy. Because <laughs> I didn't think mermaids were a real thing back then. Like, I had no idea that they weren't anything but in fairy tales, right? But here I was having this full-blown body experience of swimming down through the water towards an underwater city, right? Exclaiming, I'm a mermaid and there's a city and there's other mer people and having this, this full-blown remembrance. I, I, I come up out of the trance and I have this whole, you know, story about my life or my soul being, being mer that I've reported to the regression therapist. And, and she was great. She was just like, tell me more the whole time. What else is going on? Uh, very encouraging for me to to live through uh, that lens of remembrance, and that that incident, that session of finding out my mer origins, and that I'm I'm actually an incarnated mer person from Atlantis here to talk about the great kingdom of Atlantis and the mer people, transformed my perception of who not only who I thought I was, but who we all are. Because we all come from somewhere else. Our human suits that we're wearing are just like one stream or one aspect of the oversoul and the totality, the multidimensionalness of the great beings we are, right? So me owning and acknowledging the fact that I am a merperson and incarnated 
as human. And I have a mission here to talk and share, uh, you know, the kingdom of Atlantis, the Atlantean wisdom philosophy and share that via, you know, YouTube videos, courses and all the things that I offer. What that has done, you know, my courage to step into that is allowed other people who not only feel that they are mer because there's lots of us, but know that they are star seeds or know that they are, um, you know, fairy energy, uh, where, wherever your soul maybe comes from, you know, whatever galaxy or star system or universe, it's I've helped many, many people step into their galactic self, their multidimensional self to, to understand why they feel different, why you feel different. Why maybe you feel like you've never belonged or you've never fit in here on the planet? Well, well, you are different. Your soul is from somewhere else. And when somebody lets you understand, remember, acknowledge that, and you can be validated, that is uh, for, for your human self here, that's very life-changing. That's very like, oh, okay, I, I, I get it now. And now what can I do with this remembrance, you know, that I am a Pleiadian starseed? or that I'm Mer, or that I'm from the angelic realm. How do I utilize that on this planet, on this timeline to help myself and maybe help others in the world? So how do you find out what you are? Is it, do you do a past life regression to find it like you did? Past life regression or a soul progression, which is where I take you into a, a, a theric healing space and let you go into a, a healing room you create in your mind's eye and, and meet with your guides and angels or go to that place, that origin of your soul. Some people have a pretty good idea. They like really feel drawn to something or someone or an era. And uh, and we can make set the intention that you visit that. Some have no idea. They just need to discover that. And so we go on a journey together through the hypnosis or trance to find that out. That's incredible. I feel like we both knew each other in the 40s. And then I have a lot of draw <laughs> to like ancient periods. Mm -hmm. uh, not mm -hmm. so much the like the last like the 1800s or maybe a little bit 1700s, but like ancient like Greek and Roman times. Um, I have uh, I'm a Norse descent to a degree and that's part of me. I'm a mixture. But uh I feel a connection to that. And then an interesting thing, probably just because I grew up in the Northwest, but I feel a very strong connection to the the, the mythos and the culture, the North 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 uh sorry, Northwest Indian mm -hmm. culture and art and their mm -hmm. mythology. So it's you probably have lifetimes uh within all of those eras and, and all of those soul groups. Um, so you probably have some literal DNA and then also we have spiritual DNA. Um, you know, we have DNA. There are many people who some will, will remember being like maybe in a Norse lifetime, but they don't carry that DNA in their literal body, but their mm -hmm. spiritual DNA is maybe from some place that they remember or feel very strongly drawn to. So I would just trust yourself, you know, with all of that. Would, um, would somebody have to come to your place in Hawaii to have a session? Or is that something you do? Well, that would be great if you come <laughs> to Kauai, but no, because I, I live on an island, uh, about 99% of all my work is is through Zoom or, or over the phone if we have to, and a regression or an intuitive reading or or uh, the Atlantic energy clearings, all the things I do are just as effective. I mean, as we know now, technology is, it's the way, it's the way we're all communicating and doing everything. So a Zoom call or whatever like this is usually what I do. That's amazing. I You just have to free your mind a little bit because intentions are real and there is long distance healing. I mean, it's just like being in the room. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. What Energy I knows no time or space or limitations. And when two come together, you know, in the presence of spirit and make that triad of energy, uh, really great things can happen. I got to try that. <laughs> I, I I really would like to do that. I, um, I haven't done any past life regressions. I've done, um, you know, I've done some meditations, but I haven't really worked with um, a healer or a teacher. And I think that would just be 
so fascinating. <laughs> well, you know, and regressions can be useful for many things. Um, you can find out more about your soul origins or your life purpose. It's also very useful for going in and discovering where if you have some kind of, you know, problem or situation in this life, uh, maybe you're in the same relationship patterns, maybe you have a health issue, maybe you have, you know, whatever, we can go into that root lifetime where that situation was created and find out why and heal the other life. Well, so, and another thing to say is it's not really even a past life. Time is simultaneous. Time is not linear. It's all happening at the same time. We say past life, but it's really a simultaneous lifetime. So we go visit that simultaneous life person, find out what's going on in their world and in their reality, heal them and heal it, heal you because it's both you and it's all happening at once. The whole quantum entanglement thing. Yes. <laughs> yes. And guys, don't overthink it. Don't overthink the whole, like, how does that like time and space and reality work? Uh, just know that, you know, instead of thinking about time as a linear concept, past, present, future, that think about time maybe being on, on a spiral, you know, something like this. And there are different layers on the spiral, different realities happening at the same time. And you're, you exist, exist in many planes at once. So it's all happening at once because it's all you living in these different, you know, dimensional layers. Mm -hmm. Do you think it's our souls looking for different challenges and adventures and lessons? Yeah, for sure. Yeah, for sure. I mean, we get bored. It's, it's really we for get, entertainment. <laughs> yeah, entertainment. Yeah, and well, you know, and yeah. so many us of this, of this, of us, on this moment in time, are really here for. We're here for more than just a fun experience or an exciting or a challenge. We're really here to be changers. You know, change agents for the whole trajectory of the planet that has been kind of encapsulated in, um, uh, oh gosh, what's the best way to put it? In uh, a lot of challenges and in a lot of uh, control and things and elements and powers that keep us from really living our highest, greatest selves, living our truth, living in our sovereignty and living as free people. Do you think that's tapping our energy and that's feeding them? It's so odd because I've heard this concept before and I 100% believe it's true. I mean, there's a lot of weird frequencies and mm -hmm. and things affecting us. And it's like, all of a sudden you're mad for no reason. You're just sitting there and then you're yeah. mad. Why does that happen? <laughs> well, there are all kinds of mechanisms, control mechanisms in place. You know, we're affected by the food we eat. Yeah. Uh, the air we breathe, the water we drink, you know, all of that has become very in, in, infected and, and, and toxic. Uh, we are affected by frequencies, by the 5G. We're affected by the media. So there are many, many things that are kind of working against us, yeah. uh, really come into our, our fullest selves. You know, the solutions to that when you're coming through your awakening and you're recognizing and realizing like, oh my God, this place is not what I thought it was. And you get kind of pissed because you're finding out the truth, right? Yes. Awakening is not always a beautiful experience. When you start doing that shadow work within yourself, and when you start realizing, you know, the movie stars you're looking at are, you know, who they really are and the demonic forces and the satanic forces and that a lot of our reality has been so contrived, you can get kind of pissed. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it, 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 it can be pretty brutal. And so if you are having that experience of like, uh, of really recognizing and realizing that we have been um, a spoon fed, a long stroll drip of bullshit, I'm going to put it very plainly yeah. and, and trying to come up out of that, you know, the, the movie, the, the matrix series was a, it was documentary. I mean, that's, that's really true that the, how you can kind of balance that or come up out of that or learn to heal that is you have to first and foremost, remember that we all have chosen to be here. We all made the choice in my belief system consciously to come down to this planet and be a part of what's happening and also be a part of not only discovering the truth, but discovering um, 
the solutions, right? My, my main quest or mission here is to help co-create the new earth, Atlantis. Atlantis was a great civilization uh, that existed uh, at five incarnations. The last fall was 13,000 years ago. And in the golden heydays of Atlantis, it was a utopian society where technology and science were kind of second to uh, mother nature, to human nature, to love and to community, common unity. The fall of Atlantis 13,000 years ago, you know, the concept of that, that fall and, and the fall out from it where technology, where technology and science overtook, uh, you know, our humanity yeah. and our connection to nature and our connection to source has really created this uh, massive imbalance that has reverberated not only onto planet Earth timelines, but really throughout the entire cosmos because the beings in Atlantis were from everywhere. They come came from everywhere to participate in the great experiment experience of Atlantis. So when Atlantis fell, because you know the bad guys came in and started to trick the uh, teachers and the leaders and the philosophers out of their you know out of their connection to source. When that happened, we've been waiting thirteen thousand years to really repair and resurrect that spiral of time. And uh, bring back the what I call the new Earth Atlantis, where we can once again understand that connection to each other, that connection to source, and live through our connection to God and nature as as we were intended. My soul wants that so bad. <laughs> like I think about it all the time. Yeah, how nice it would be to put humanity first, and the the animals and the earth, and um, yeah lifting each other up instead of feeding off of each other. I mean, it's, it's almost like upside down. It feels. It, it is. Everything has been reversed. <laughs> the symbols have been reversed. You know, the geometries have been inversed. Everything has become an inversion. Um, and everything that we worship out there in the world and the exterior world is, is an inversion of, of uh, our connection to source. So Again, if you are kind of coming through your own understanding that, you know, uh, everything in this world is not what you thought it was. We're in this kind of Alice in Wonderland, you know, always go back to uh, the idea that you are eternally connected to source. No matter what has happened to you in this life or any other, you are never separated from source. We are eternal beings. So many, many beings on this planet, as we go through the course correction of, of the spiral is what I talk, call it. Uh, many beings did not sign up to go all the way. And many beings uh, just aren't going to do maybe the work that's involved to go all the way back to course correcting that 13,000 year spiral. Now the good news is it's not gonna take 13,000 years, <laughs> but we still are in the throes of some very dark and heavy times where um, it's going to take all of us coming into our love, our belief, our sovereignty, our, our realization with community again, to help, you know, flip the script and put us back on the track where we can go back to the original times of Lemuria and, and Atlantis and um, live in those utopian times where we're, we know ourselves to be connected to everything and everyone. That's, that's incredible. Do you think we're going to see it um, in our lifetime or? I believe, I believe that we are in for uh, this decade to be really, really difficult. Like we've kind of bottomed out. <laughs> and although, although the timelines, there are many, many forces helping us with, with timelines. There are many, many uh, angels and archangels and galactic beings that are putting uh, uh, those of us who have decided to go with the new earth ascension and are working and actively living through that on a different timeline. It's just not always obvious in the exterior world. So the answer to your question, Christy, is yes. I actually do believe in our lifetime because the separation of worlds and timelines is happening and you know that you're what timeline you're on by the life that you are experiencing. 
yes, we all see what's going on on the news, the fake news. Right. And we see what's going on in politics and we see what's happening in our food supply. We see all these things that that in in a reality are happening. But we also see like for me, my life has never been happier, felt more supported. Um, I have never really been personally in, in, in a better space and time than I am now because my reality as a 5D and above being is I'm, I'm anchored into that. So you kind of start to live two realities. You kind of start to live, be in the world, but not of it, right? Okay, you understand that there is this 3D game that is playing out, but you also get, you don't have to adhere vibrationally or frequency wise to that game. And you discover another way or your soul remembers another way. Does that make sense? Yeah. It's, it's so easy to get your blinders on and distracted. And I mean, just, was it yesterday? Joe unplugged all the um, Alexas. <laughs> yeah. Because we feel like it's emitting a frequency um, and probably not yes. good. <laughs> and the yeah. range of ears toned down it noticeably. <clears throat> Dramatically. Yep. You know, the, the technology is a great thing in many ways. You know, it's how we're doing this. It really is to support us and to be an asset to our life. But that, you know, the dark side of the technology is they, you know, they always know what we're doing. That's always beaming something in through your electronic devices, through your Siri, Alexis, that are uh, are vibrational or frequency diminishers. So as a person, me, and I think you too, who, who aspire to maintain my, my frequency and my consciousness as high as possible, there's work that we have to do. There's work that we have to do on the inner. And then there's work that we can do also in our energy field and our 13 chakras and in our auric field, kind of protection, I guess I'll call it, or shielding, clearing, all those things that we have to learn to do within and around us and uh, to remain in dominion over our energy and our frequency. And it's up to each individual to figure out or to learn and apply methods to do that. Do you mm -hmm. think that's a daily practice people? Yes. Should, yeah, absolutely. Uh, it's a daily practice that kind of has to become like a muscle memory uh, within you. Um, that's another thing I'm very, very good at doing is uh, teaching the Atlantean 13 chakra and aura clearing system and giving people tools through sacred geometry through Metatron's cube, how to help themselves, because it's great to have a, you know, an, an energy person, a healer clear you, but you're not going to stay that way unless you learn and practice tools. And unless you learn to change your thoughts, your consciousness, Absolutely. Okay, your, your beliefs, learn to look at your shadows and your triggers, right. And um, make your way through that, that very kind of sometimes dark winding path to the other side and and that takes a lot of that takes a lot of patience takes a lot of compassion with ourselves and the persistence and the desire to like not stop till you get to the other side yeah it, it doesn't come easy right no yeah. you no clear yourself basically and you got to work for it if you want there's wanna. no magic bullet there's no book you're going to read there's no person you're going to talk to who is going to just snap their fingers and and do it for you or do it, you know, and, and it's all going to change. It is a co consistent daily practice, sometimes two steps forward, three steps back of uh, really going into those deep, dark places within us, um, uh, you know, that lower chakra stuff and making friends with that instead of denying it, having tea with it, <laughs> asking it what it needs, what's it want, and going into other lifetimes, going into your own sacred heart and uh and conjoining or opening and clearing the heart the high heart you know the energy field to to align more deeply with um you know with source with the with the truth of who you are remembering somebody said that um when they say that your 
activating your feminine energy or your masculine energy. Feminine would be the heart and masculine would be the head. Is that something you believe? That's a good analogy. And the whole ma ma masculine feminine balancing, we haven't even gotten into that yet. <laughs> <laughs> like that's a whole nother, you know, that's uh, a station. <laughs> that's a whole nother station. But, but yes, uh, uh, merging the thought with the feelings. Um, that's a part of the masculine and feminine balancing, understanding what it means to be, uh, uh, to, to, you know, to balance your masculine and feminine doesn't necessarily mean that you become, it doesn't mean you become an androgynous being. We both have masculine and feminine within us and the distortions between men and women, masculine and feminine um, has been become, become so, you know, so intense and clear cut. So beginning to understand where you hold victim as the feminine, where you hold power over as the masculine, you know, what all that means and, and untangling that is, is part of the whole process too. Years ago, you told me there was more chakras than, I mean, I always thought the chakra ended at the crown. You said there was 13 chakras. Um, the, it's not wildly known, but I, I see it being more adapted when you say high heart is that could you tell us a little bit so about heart is right here in the heart center the high heart is here at the thymus okay. so the thymus the thymus gland is the high heart the high heart is for receiving the heart is for giving many of us have you know open hearts we give 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 but we forget to receive or accept or we forget, you know, that the high heart is about all the cool things we set up for ourselves before we come here, all the people we need, all the opportunities we need, the abundance, and yes, the money <laughs> and the resources that we need to have a good life here. So uh, many of us, because humans have a tendency to lack self-worth or uh, feel like we don't deserve yeah. the cool stuff in life, we shut down our our high heart we set, shut down our receiving and we give it all away or we can be people pleasers or we put other people first before our own needs and don't have the boundaries because part of self-love is a, a no when we mean no and not a yes when we mean yes <laughs> right yeah you know and and that actually that that's not even a throat thing you know that the saying uh you, you know no when we mean no it's solar plexus courage and confidence coming up through to let the throat be at, let the heart and high heart activate so the throat can speak truth so 13 chakras is what i uh i i, I study and, and and i teach um starting from the earth star beneath your feet moving all the way up to the stellar gateway or the golden gateway which is right uh, the 12th chakra and then the, the 13th is actually right in the center of the body between the heart and the solar plexus. That's your 13th chakra. So that might be a interview for another day. Um, but that, that 13th master chakra is what is trying to open within all of us. Uh, that is allowing us to complete that circuit of the 13 chakras that align with the 13. I, I'm looking at your Metatron's cube sphere back there, the 13 right. spheres and Metatron's cube, which is a template for the balance of the masculine and feminine. I didn't know that. Yeah, I, I know. I got all this. <laughs> I got classes on that too, by the way. If anyone is interested in sacred geometry, the basics um, on my website, I have a, a intro to sacred geometry course that, that I'll take you all the way through all the different forms of geometry and into Metatron's cube and, and the esoteric meanings behind them. It's uh, it's it's really different when you're working with a teacher as opposed to reading a book. For some reason, yeah. it just goes deeper and yeah, you get it. <laughs> well, you can question and answer. Yeah, you know. That's, yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, you, I I remember you had a book on the chakras. Is that it, it's a child's book? Yeah, I did. I wrote a kid's book. Hold on, I'll grab it real quick. <laughs> I just happened to have it handy right here oh my gosh look at that yeah called body of stars and it is a book that takes um children from about you know age six to twelve um through all the, the chakras from the earth star beneath the feet to to the crown and it's very beautifully um written and uh, the images are very beautiful and there's a little um uh, art project 
at the end. So yeah, I have that available. It's good for kids of all ages. If you're brand new to chakras, I have a lots of adults who buy this book. <laughs> I actually, I want to get one for my grandkids. I think they'd really enjoy it. Yeah. My oldest one, she's seeing orbs and things. And cool. The little one who's four, he is talking about frequencies. Yeah. Which is interesting. Wow. So you have new earth children at your, at your feet. That's exciting. Um, It's been like a year or two ago. He was explaining to us that there's holes in the ground and blue energy comes out of them. He was explaining (laughs) that there's different frequencies that come out of these and what it does for us in the world. And we're like, we're just sitting there like, wow. I mean, (laughs) did you record him and take notes and Uh, (laughs) ask him where the holes were? (laughs) You know, it always happens when you're not expecting it. Sure. You don't know that it's going to be something profound, you know, when it's a little kid, but I would pay attention to what they're saying for sure. Yep, Absolutely. So um, you have so many things that are fascinating. You have some crystals that, um, and Dara? Uh, and Dara's, yes. And Dara. I, I work with and and sell or adopt out Andara crystals, which come in all these um, beautiful colors um, and sizes. And I even have, I don't know if you guys are into skulls, but the little Andara skulls. As oh well. gosh, oh, so all, all kinds I have all kinds of andaras and i actually break these down into a dust into a powder and micronize them into dust and then i have a clothing company a sacred geometry clothing company called wisdom wear and i put the andara dust the crystal dust into my clothing into the ink of the sacred geometry that is so oh, cool, cool. And unique. I, you're the only one who does that as far as I yeah, know. Yeah, yeah, pretty much. And so everything's on organic fabrics. Bamboo is my favorite. Always do some hemp and, and some cotton. So you get the crystals and the sacred geometry, uh, you know, in your energy field. Hmm. That, that's amazing. I, I've heard some people say that they they buy those shirts all the time and it just kind of amps up the, the energy. Yeah. Feeling like high vibe in. <laughs> well, and there are, you know, there there are three things in this world that are projective. Everything else is reflective. So the three things in the world that are projective are light bulbs. They project. Uh, <laughs> Rudraksha seeds, which are the little Hindu uh, mala beads that they make. They come off of trees in the sacred forest. It's actually a sacred forest on Kauai. The little Hindu mala beads, their Sanskrit mantras, those are projective. The other thing that is projective is sacred geometry, which means when you wear my clothes, um, the sacred geometry that is on you will project out into the world and affect other people in your sphere, which is very, very cool. So not only is it only healing for, you know, your aura and for you, but you actually send something healing through the crystals and the geometry out to everybody you come in contact with. And, you know, when you, when you wear my clothes, people be drawn to the prints. They might not even know what they are, <laughs> but they're, because they're trans, you know, they're, they're, uh, they're, they're, they belong to all of us. So people will come up and like notice the print and it will do something to help harmonize the right and left hemispheres of their, their brain. Um, and I actually have a vision through wisdom where to put 144,000 people in my crystal infused sacred geometry clothing, because, you know, that's, that's the Ascension number, right? That's a very special Mm -hmm. spiritual number. So I feel like when there's 144,000 people wearing my crystal infused sacred geometry clothing, that we will create our own vibrational tipping point for the collective, like all of, all of us together. So that's kind of the goal and the vision through wisdom wear. What a cool idea. We'll everybody to... plays everybody wins <laughs> where where do i go to shop and and find all these incredible so you can find the clothes and the crystals at wisdomware.org exactly how it's spelled wisdomware.org and uh, my shop is on there and i have not only clothes and crystals but my my courses and, and meditations also and, and the book and then if you are interested in a healing session with me or uh, taking a course with me or whatever, um, amiraatlantis.com and, and they're together. You can get to 
ameratlantis.com through wisdomware you can get through wisdomware through ameratlantis.com that's incredible i i just want to thank you from the bottom of my heart for coming on today and i know that your message is going to help people um have a little more understanding of what's going on because <laughs> mm-hmm. <Yeah. laughs> we're Good, all i hope so <laughs> I know. I was lucky enough to have you to go to when I first started waking up. So um, not everybody has that, but I definitely recommend taking classes with Amira. I I've known her for what, what would we say, like ten years? Yeah. We're there. And look at you now, girl, hosting your own show. <laughs> <laughs> That's amazing. I'd, I'd wake up from having a download, and I'd tell Christy this really weird thing just happened, and and trying to explain it to her. And she's like, oh, you got to download. I'm like, okay, what does it mean? <laughs> yeah, that's always the question. But, but interestingly enough, a lot of them, you just have to wait. And yeah. your your life will come to the answer. You, you're, as you're walking through your life, all of a sudden mm-hmm. you'll have that epiphany. It'll make sense all of, out of nowhere. And, and even, if you, even, if it, even if you consciously can't discern or figure out what the download or the message means, your subconscious and your soul knows. Right. So always just trust your soul. I say that all the time. Trust your gut. Yeah. <laughs> it knows. Yeah. <laughs> well, we're going to have to have you back on our show again. And uh, I'd love to. <laughs> amazing topics we've been talking about. Um, thank you so much. And I hope you enjoy uh, what is earlier there. Your five hours. Oh, uh, it's only two o'clock in the afternoon. I got all day. Let's, and enjoy the, the sunshine and the beautiful <laughs> ocean and uh you know if anybody's ever been to Hawaii especially Kauai you're gonna know that there's a special energy there and just soak it up yep exactly truly fresh pineapple for us <laughs> yay I will <laughs> well, thank you for allowing me to express myself thank you so much <laughs> thank you bye-bye <Aloha>. <laughs>